Mm. Hello, everybody. I'm Bricky. Uh, I'm a little tired right now because I just came home from Vegas from a LVO Warhammer tournament after leaving at about 8 p.m. and getting home at about 2 a.m. And you know what? It was rough. But thankfully, the roughness of the trip was lessened extremely by our sponsor for today. Raycon. If you're unfamiliar with Raycon, they make some of the best earbuds currently around. I'm sure you've seen an ad for them at some point, but legitimately, they are honestly the real deal. And when you're spending an entire three days setting up Warhammer stuff, setting up your army, getting your stuff done, getting extra painting done because you forgot to paint all your stuff in time, and your buddy Raph is snoring like a son of a bitch, it's really nice when you can have some great earbuds. These two guys sound fantastic. They look great. The case they come in is fantastic. They have a variety of different little, the, the squishy boys, you know, for, for ear sizes, the, the squishy boys. They've got huge battery life, like over 30 hours, and they have around like eight, nine hours of playtime. <laughs> and let me tell you, they don't move, which is so handy especially when I'm working out or if I'm trying to sleep with these things on, them not budging at all is a lifesaver. And of course, the audio quality is like extremely damn good, especially considering the price they're selling them for. These things were a goddamn lifesaver during LVO, and I would highly recommend you pick up yourselves your own pair and go down in the description and click the link or go to buyraycon.com slash bricky to get 15% off your order. I've got more Necron books to read anyway, and combining Necron supremacy with a little bit of weightlifting and Raycons good choice. Thank you very much for watching this video. Check out the description and let's get on with today's topic. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently dead. I've been on a horde shooter binge lately. We had the Call of Duty Vanguard video, we had the Left 4 Dead video, we had the Back 4 Blood video, and now we're talking about the early access game, the Anacrusis, if that is how that is said. I saw a trailer for this game at the Summer Games Fest of last year, and it looked like a 60s themed Left 4 Dead. I mean, that's that's what you see probably with the background footage. It looks like a 60s themes Left 4 Dead. I hope it's the 60s. I think it's the 60s. And it just released on Early Access in the beginning of this January. And then I played it about a week after their first major bug fix slash patch. My thoughts on the game? There is not a single factor of this game that is not going to need a mountain of changes. The characters need work. The UI needs work. The enemies need work. The weapons need work. The sound needs work. Every Everything in this game has a mountain of issues. And I kinda like it. The Anacrusis is promising. Despite its Mount Everest sized amount of issues it has currently, not just the early access stuff, which is its own category of things it needs because early access, there are also a myriad of problems that go into the, this actually is a problem section as well. But even with that mountain of problems, I. I kind of like it. If I could describe this game in two words, it would be volatile potential. Roll credits. There is some legitimate Left 4 Dead spiritual successor in this game that I was not getting in Back 4 Blood whatsoever. I feel immediately at home. So it doesn't surprise me that out of the crew of only 20 developers, some of them are from the original Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 projects. And you know what? I feel it. Now, it's going to take a lot, especially if they want to bring everything up to snuff by the second half of 2022 when they want to fully release the game and bring it out of early access. That being said, there's something here. So let me tell you the story of my first game. Very bad. Yes. Oh, this is bad. Oh! I jump into the game, jump in the main menu, and it looks pretty Left 4 Dead-y. I mean, even with the static shot on a map with the zombies or uh, their aliens in this one walking around. The menu is honestly really bad and it needs a lot of work. Everything is static. Nothing has any flair to the main menu. That, that's a whole thing. I'm not going to harp on that for too long. But I go to the game. I choose the first mission and I immediately load in. In fact, it actually loads me in with a bunch of other random players as opposed to bots because I didn't have anyone playing the game with me at the time. Starting off, I notice the glaring problems, the dialogue especially. Each character doesn't have any real 
weight or oomph to their voice. It seems like they're reading something straight off of a script and there isn't any effort put into it. All the dialogue that comes out is really flat and it always gets cut off by them shouting at some special alien arriving. Kind of like how if Coach was saying something and then he would yell Charger, th that kind of deal. The natural dialogue doesn't finish properly and them constantly screaming out the enemy there is being a real nuisance. In fact, they all scream it out at one time. And I'm not sure if Left 4 Dead had a way to rectify this where only one person would scream out smoke or spitter or whatever, because in this game, they're all yelling at the same time. And it's very annoying. Next thing I noticed was the guns. They sound like shit. They honestly sound like Nerf guns given a pew pew sound. Not only do they sound like shit, but there's barely any and the animations for them are not good. The, there's no sway, there's no motion, it's static. You're like a robot. There's no moving with the character. And if there is, it's very, very light. The reloads are extremely static looking. There's no emphasis on anything. It's just a static looking weapon and it's really poorly animated and they sound just terrible. The infected alien don't look great either they are like a face hugger on a regular person kind of thing but their clothes are totally normal so it almost kind of in fact their clothes look like the shirt i'm wearing right now so it kind of blends in with the very colorful background too they're not really distinct at all and they're just kind of a bit of a boring enemy now as i was traversing the map i noticed my shove mechanic that my shove com um <laughs> I noticed my shove mechanic, which was known as a pulse. Now, Left 4 Dead, if you wanted zombies to get off you, you would shove them. And you could do it pretty often, but it was directional, and it would eventually get like a cooldown if you did it a lot. This one is a 360 degree AOE pulse that flings back everything, and it has three charges instead. Now this thing, when I was using it, oh, it was laughable. It was so powerful. You just went bong, bong, everything was off of you. It was so freaking easy to use, and I immediately realized, oh God, this thing is gonna be so overpowered. So continuing to run through the map, I encounter some of the special infected, special aliens. The first one was a brute, kind of like a hybrid between a charger and a tank, so to speak. And this thing was enormous, would charge at me and do a shitload of damage. And it took so many bullets to kill. It was really aggravating to deal with. The second one I noticed was something I think was called a gooer or something similar to that. The gooer would fire goo and that would put you into this insane like, Coom cocoon. And your teammates would have to shoot the coom cocoon off of you to break you free, which was always annoying because every single time that would happen, every character at the same time would yell, goo, goo, goo. So as you can tell now, my impressions weren't great starting off. A lot of problems, guns, characters, infected, all this stuff, lots of issues besides the map. But then I started to really kind of see what they were going for, and I started to enjoy myself. Hey, that's pretty good. For instance, the map looks really good. They really nailed that sci-fi 60s aesthetic there, not only with some of the music, but also just the color palette and the way the entire, like the buildings and area, it, it, looks, it looks the part, doesn't it? The map looks the part. A gigantic sprawling spaceship with a 60s sci-fi vibe. It looks it. The map started off pretty neat, but then it started to get really cool. I was going in these play spaces that were kind of incredible. A giant like five story tall cylindrical mall with tons of stairs and, and platforms and elevators to go around with. There was a awesome residential area underneath a fake sky dome that was glitching out with these giant fields of flowers that would part whenever you would go through them and stay parted. The locations in this first mission were getting really sprawling and impressive and looking really great, actually. The special aliens got better too. There's this little bastard that would spawn, I think it's called a spawner, that would bring out these little balls, spawn these little balls and that would roll up towards you and unfold into like this plant that would spit shit at you. And so long as it was alive, it could hide really far away and constantly spit those things at you so you had to go do this little hide and seek thing to find it and kill it because the moment you found it it was slow as shit and it could do nothing there's a smoker style enemy i believe called a grabber that grabs you from just across the map and yanks you into its clutches and they had one special infected that i thought infected whatever that was really cool called the flasher the flasher is probably the best way i've ever seen someone do a blinding mechanic in a game it's a special alien that would literally have this enormous like 
blast of bright light wherever it was, but it wasn't really to blind me. It was actually more to obscure your vision from the zombies that it was next to. The flasher made it harder for you to shoot at enemies as opposed to actually making you go, oh fuck. It's a really unique concept. They even have their variant of a witch. It's this giant collaboration of spiked balls. And if you hit it, it just swarms you with these horrifying spiked balls. It's pretty dope. So remember when I said the 360 degree AOE pulse was overpowered? I thought it was. And then you get into some of these insane holdout parts where I see more aliens on this map than I do see zombies in Left 4 Dead. I think they fit more regular enemies in these holdout sections than they do in the previous games, which is impressive because those games are pretty nuts with the amount of enemies they put on. When you do the holdout missions, they swarm you. Oh my God, the amount that are just flying through this every cavern and nook and cranny and they just cover you in aliens and that pulse helps for a bit but that thing has a cooldown and you're gonna feel that fucking cooldown it is not seeing the flood of enemies coming your way and then combining that with these special aliens or whatever bearing down on you the pulse is not as good as I thought it was. In fact, they even found a way to up the skill of the player using the pulse. You can actually use it like a parry. So if you look at the Left 4 Dead Smoker, when it hits you with a tongue, you have a slight second of delay and then it slowly drags you towards the smoker for the damage. The grabber in this game just snatches you from really far away. And that seems really strong. Turns out, right when he's going to grab you, you can smack the pulse button at the right time and it completely nullifies the ability. You literally parry the fucker just then and there. Not only can you do that, but the gooer, same thing. It spits goo at you to try to cocoon you. Bam, pulse, parry the bastard. So if you have the timing right, you can actually nullify some of the more annoying threats that the special infected bring at you. That brute that was really annoying and constantly jumping on me doing a bunch of damage. I mean, I still think it's annoying and I do think there should be some tweaks to that thing, but there's a grenade you can have, a stasis grenade. Throw it, that thing moves at a crawl and you can just murder the bastard right there and then in fact there's a ton of grenades in this game regular grenades little singularity grenades shield grenades stasis grenades that might be all the grenades incendiary grenades they also kept some of the design ideas from the original left for dead now there's an old documentary vidoc or whatever on making left for dead and they talk about all these really interesting things you never would have thought about right all four survivors having a very distinct silhouette so you can tell who's who in this game all four characters do have a pretty distinct silhouette at least in the silhouette style i think their clothes really need to change but i think they're adding skins to the game so that might be the way to do it but even small things like the hairstyle right you got the big afro that's obvious you had the regular guy that kind of looks like nick a little bit where he's all all you know good looking and dressed up one of the girls has this double double bun that thing and then one has the long hair like the silhouettes are there also the special aliens are really distinct in their sound effects the brute is super obvious whenever he jumps onto the field the flasher is extremely extremely obvious when he arrives just based on the sound effects they make just like in the original left for dead the boomer was distinct the jockey was distinct the hunter oh you know that sound it's distinct also the music is surprisingly good the sound mixing is a bit rough so when you play the game you might not hear the music very well but if you try it turn everything else down listen to the soundtrack it's kind of a bop so playing through the first mission i started to enjoy myself more and more and more as time was going on and i actually ended up finishing the first mission after about two to three wipes in about an hour it was hefty it had some length to it and this was all without any comms whatsoever solo matchmaking now the next two missions they currently have are nothing to really write home about the second one is extremely short and the third one is not as long as the first one but like somewhere in between they're fine they're not not bad or anything but i need a bit of a warning on their length after that big sprawling like epic that was the first one i expected something similar with the other two and i did not get that but i played all three of them and well 
that was about it. I mean, it's early access. There's no progression. There's nothing really going on there. Like that was it. I played all three, tried them out, tried out all the weapons, got some of the perks that you can get, which is kind of similar to Back for Blood's card thing, where as you go through, you can, you can pick up perks on the way through. So going from there, as you can see with the gameplay, there's tons of problems. Oh my God, there's tons of problems. Yeah, but I'm not done yet though. Wait, you're not done building it? Ah! The UI, I think, really needs an update. I can barely tell when people are down and I need more indications. The sound mixing needs big improvements. I think Left 4 Dead uses music very well to talk about drastic situations, like when you get downed, it plays that tune, or whenever a special infected arrives. The weapons, I've already harped on plenty. The characters need huge updates in terms of their dialogue, both from a technical and an actual performance standpoint. But the issue comes down to which of these are early access problems? and which of these are problem problems. Because if I were to be mad that there was only three missions, well, that'd be kind of dumb because there's going to be five total, at least that's what they have so far, and obviously more down the line. However, I don't think it's unfair of me to want like a little indicator, a, hey, first one is five segments. Chapter two is two segments. Chapter three is three segments. So at least no, kind of like when you choose a mission in Left 4 Dead, you see how many chapters there are, or whatever it's called. There are not enough guns in the game. Well, I mean, that's something that probably be, will be added with time because early access and all that. The guns sound and feel like shit. Okay, that's a problem. Now, it could be an early access thing, but that's definitely a technical thing, and I think that needs to be adjusted. The game's progression isn't in yet, but that comes later, early access. The characters will have skins and things of that nature that might help with their color palette. It's that weird thing where it's like, how much of this is early access? How much of this is actual technical things that need changing now? Because the fact the foundation of this game is solid. It's rock solid. Like if you're watching this now, probably the whole video you're thinking, oh, this just looks kind of bland and boring. And yeah, it does look kind of bland and boring, but it doesn't play bland and boring. I found myself having a really good time with it. And it seems like a lot of the other people that are playing the game are enjoying themselves with the game, but everyone else looking in kind of thinks, Eh. Left 4 Dead stands on its own two feet with just all the little things. That documentary I mentioned before, they filmed like 50 different kinds of zombie death animations to make it all seem unique. The environment gets broken and blows up depending on what the characters do. The dialogue that was written for it. In this game, when I shoot someone accidentally, they'll say like, ow, ow, owie, something like that. But when you do that in Left 4 Dead, you hear coach go, hey, Nick. That was my ass you shot. Or, or, you know, Nick gets shy and says, You do that again, and I will bury you alive. Just that kind of dialogue really carries the game. The sound design, the weight to the weapons, all that little minutia made Left 4 Dead. And that's the biggest problem this game has, is that that quality control, that overall quality of life is just so low and it needs to be brought up. It has the same ping system that Apex does, which is great, but you know what Apex also does? Has multiple takes when they say stuff. It's not just the same Mozambique here every time, it's Mozambique here. Mozambique here. Mozambique here. Mozambique here. Having that makes it feel so lived in. It's why Left 4 Dead's characters are some of the best written characters I've ever seen. Because they act human and they sound human. They do uh and um and they cough and they do all that crap. Hell, when they're dying, it's pretty horrifying. So if you're aiming for a full release in the second half of 2022, Obviously, extra content in the game is very important, but getting down that quality of life stuff, I think is super, super paramount. Especially because everything else they're saying, I really love. Cross-play across all systems and consoles, which I think is already currently in the game. They also have, where's my quote? We're also committed to rolling out mod tools that will make it easier for modders to create new content for the game during the early access slash game preview period based from the makers of the home stenographer comes the wrap it up box there's a ton of changes i need this game to see there are a ton of adjustments this game needs to get in order to become really good but i'm kind of hyped for it personally i don't think i'll be playing this game a whole lot right now i'll probably do another run through or two with the missions but i'm probably gonna leave it at that because there's not a lot going on right now but I really keep an eye on this one. This gives me Left 4 Dead feelings. This 
feels like Left 4 Dead in the modern age. It's just not done yet. It needs a ton of work, and I really hope the developers can pull that out despite being only a team of like 20. So should you buy the Anacruzis? That's how it's said. Well, it's early access, and if you're not a fan of that, I understand, but this does feel more like a we want the extra funding to help with the game early access, not the cash grab early access. There's too much good here for it to be that negative. I'd say treat this game like a stock. You buy it and you're investing in the game. And if the game does crap, well, you don't get anything out of it. But if the game does great, you get a ton out of it. It's not really like that, of course, but I'm just saying you're taking a gamble. Despite it, I don't regret my purchase. Do I think I got my money's worth? Not quite yet, but I might later. So we'll see. Thank you everyone very much for watching this video. We had a pretty solid January. Big shout out to my boy Skater for editing these. It's so nice having an editor that's on my wavelength. Holy fuck. Let's answer some Patreon questions for all the patrons and members you are seeing scrolling up on screen now. You should read some questions now. What the fuck are my questions? How do you decorate a burger? What is your hierarchy of needs when it comes to a good burger? Ooh, we gotta get condiments. I always like onions on my burger, and I always make sure to put the onions or the lettuce on the bottom bun, then patty, then tomato, then like another slab of lettuce or just some other retainer, and then condiments plus bun. I don't want the juicy burger to sog up my bun. Cooked or raw onions on a hot dog? I can do either. Uh, raw onions are fine, like onions and mustard you know if you have a costco near you any of you have a costco they have like the onion roller thing that and, and like deli mustard was my main thing but cooked onions are also totally fine why am i still cringe that's uh there's a lot of reasons for that one why are they cringe thanks papa nergs why are they cringe i'll see you all in february come on obviously you're a skater